welcome everyone thank you for clicking on this video we are here discussing as you can see below me tonight's episode of the final season succession episode two titled rehearsal as we are gearing up for connor's wedding which seems to be kind of in limbo but we'll talk about that tonight the kids they can't be on the same page why can't shiv and rome and 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 my man can just be on the same page for more than a week can we just make that happen because it seems like rome is running back to daddy we're speaking of daddy logan He's playing with everyone. He's testing everyone. He's testing Tom. He's testing Greg. He's testing Carrie, who we'll, we'll talk about her audition tape in tonight's breakdown. And he is just, he's on another level. He's 10 steps ahead of everyone as this deal seems to be in limbo with Lucas. And we have, of course, Stewie and Sandy Jr. coming in the fourth quarter trying to make the, the price go up a little bit higher. There's a lot to go over, a lot of family drama, and we know how much this show gives us the great writing. So let's get into the breakdown and let's talk about our first scene. And again, I want you all that's watching live and those that are watching this breakdown, who stole this episode for you? Put in the comments right now, who was tonight's game changer? I'm going to put my hat in that bin and I'm going to tell you all, Logan changed the game of this episode. Like I had mentioned in last week's breakdown, kids shook his core. You know, they 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 were able to get the 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 ball rolling with the Pierce deal, which may I remind you, Logan did not get that deal done. So the fact that his kids were able to get it done, they won last week. We all talked about it. Sure, the price was maybe too high. Maybe this was part of Logan's plan, but I don't think so. But this week, he showed everyone, including his kids, who the real deal maker deal breaker can be in every situation as we see him he's he's feeling good at the beginning of the episode as we know it's only 24 more hours before the the whole lucas uh, acquisition comes into place and he buys white star and we see that logan has a plan to go to a t n which we will be getting into here but as he's and again let me know do you all feel the same with me as Logan being the, the game changer in tonight's episode? And we, as that's going on, we see that the kids, and this is where I want to know where you guys are at with the kids right now, as they're watching their newly or potentially newly acquired business, uh, the PGN. As they're watching the news and listening to them talking about the news and what they want to do with the news, it, it, it doesn't seem... The more we're seeing them trying to be the business people, trying to be their dad, they're they don't seem to be that interested, man. Like they don't seem to really be that interested in news. You just have, you know, a global reach and, and, and obviously Shiv and, and Rome have their thoughts about it. <laughs> it's like like watching a homework show. But again, it's in this scene here that I'm just realizing, I'm not really realizing, but it's just like they're just trying to this is a front. This is this them trying to, again, defeat their dad. They're trying to pose as their father. This doesn't come natural to them as it does for Logan, obviously. So, again, I think this is all a front, especially from Shiv, and as well as, as Ken. It's, it's very personal. And this is where Rome comes in because even last week we talked about it. While Ken is trying to get back at his dad, as Shiv is trying to get back at Tom, and now with her dad being involved with the divorce, Rome seems to be the only one that's level-headed. Rome seems to be the only one that really wants to make himself create a path for himself with his with his siblings, right? With the whole hundred business they were trying to get off the ground. So this this scene is very telling to me that they really don't know what they're doing, <laughs> right? And it's more of like I said, it's more personal than it is business. Rome seems to be the only one that's focused on the business. Ken only seems to want to get back at his dad. Meanwhile, Siobhan is worried about this whole situation with Tom. And it's so interesting to see her being so concerned with Tom because the first three seasons of the show, she can care, she seemed to care less about her husband and in a sense of, oh, let's have an open marriage. Oh, let's do this, let's do that. Her leading the way. But now that Tom's pushing back, she, that's the only thing on her mind. As we see very early on, she gets the call and she finds out that some of the best divorce lawyers have been compromised or have been kind of swayed by Tom. And, you know, immediately, and we find out a little bit later in the episode why, but immediately I'm like, wow, is Tom making moves like his father-in-law? Is he knows the ruffle of feathers? But as we'll talk about later, this was all Logan's kind of doing. And Siobhan, you know, this is what happens when you're going to dad. He has all the resources in his back pocket. But again, I want to put an emphasis on this, that this is, again, this is not only Siobhan, but also Kendall. It's personal. And for anyone out there that's been a part of a business or runs a business, Whenever you get the personal involved with the actual numbers and the business and the deals, and 
that muddies the water. So while they're in there, you know, doing their due diligence, watching their new acquired acquisition or soon to be acquisition with their new station with Pierce, she's more concerned about Tom. Ken's more concerned about embarrassing his dad. So again, their lack of focus speaks more to, as I mentioned, this is why Logan is who he is, right? You take the personal away and you focus on business at hand. So again, Siobhan, I love you. She's one of my favorite characters, but Tom has really ruffled her feathers, y'all. She really has. And speaking of ruffle of feathers, when she calls Tom eventually a little bit, you know, not too far away from this scene, she calls Tom about the business move and the, the move that she thinks that he was a part of in regards to the lawyers taking away from what she can maybe, you know, get as far as lawyers representing her. She was pretty, um, pretty aggressive. And Tom, cool, calm, and collective like a cucumber. He's just like, I, I'm, I'm telling you, Shiv, I, I don't know what you're talking about. And we all know it was Logan that helped him out, but he's playing it cool. And again, very non-aggressive, which is the complete opposite of Shiv, who's calling him bitch boy and telling him all this stuff. Man, I'm telling you, man, what I've been impressed with so far with Tom this season is the way he's moving, the way he's maneuvering the situation. He knows that Shiv is... He has the best of her right now. And it's if I was Tom in a situation, I would be relishing in this. I would be pretty happy with myself considering that throughout the relationship from what we've seen in the show, she's always been the leader of this, of every situation in their relationship. So Tom, playing her like a fiddle, man. It's, it's interesting to see Shiv because we've always seen her very similar to her father and a lot of the kids really, but more so Shiv. The emotions, they don't, Shiv and, and Logan have a lot more in common when it comes to being emotional lists. And we've seen her not really lead with her emotions and not be too lovey-dovey and all that stuff, very much so like Logan. But we see that she's not Logan. And this is where her vulnerability comes out, that it does bother her that Tom has her in a grip and he's making moves without her. So I don't know, let me know what you all thought about Shiv and again, her her approach of leading more with the personal, more so than focusing on the business. But speaking of the business, y'all know I got to talk about my disgusting brothers. Greg lets Tom know that Logan is in the building and he calls him Santa Claus. That looks like Santa Claus is a hitman. And if if Jaws was, if Jaws ruled everyone, and if you work for Jaws again, I just love how fearful Logan's presence is for anyone. Uh, and, and again, this <laughs> moment was so funny to me. But speaking of this Jaws like figure, this Santa Claus hitman figure, aka Logan. He's in the bullpen, man. He's uh, going around making everyone a little bit nervous, which, like I said, makes sense. We find out that Miss Carrie is, you know, and we all knew this, you know, if, if it was ever on the fence, if Carrie was sleeping with Logan, well, you, you got your answer in this episode as she's kind of maneuvered her way into becoming an anchor. And oh boy, when we see this tape, ladies and gentlemen, of her trying to be an anchor as the kids are watching this on TV, yeah, she's she's pretty bad. I don't know if bad uh, is the word that I would use. It was pretty horrendous. It was pretty embarrassing. She's not good at being an anchor, for sure. As we have the kids again watching this, and she is just terrible in every sense of the word. She is. She has an influence on Logan. We'll talk about it later. But the, the empathy that Logan does have for these kids, I do think he loves them in, in the Logan way of loving someone. But... The way she's maneuvering the situation at hand, being the person that he confines to, tells his emotions to, talks about the kids with, but also finding a way to potentially become a news anchor. I mean, Carrie is is not a is not no one to blink an eye at, man. I'm very curious to see how much she plays into the rest of the decisions that Logan may or may not make this season. And we talked about it last week if Marsha is going to be appearing in this season. The more and more we get Carrie on screen, the more and more I think that Marsha might not be involved because she's right now Carrie's kind of filling that void as the the right hand woman of Logan at this point in the season. So again, hormone audition tape, but the fact that she was able to get essentially kind of what she wants, which is, I guess, to be a news anchor slash still be Logan's assistant. I don't know how that works, but I'm I'm very 
I'm keeping my eye on Carrie. Devon is um, is leading. I think she's leading more with her heart and her emotions more so than being the logical person. Because again, we, we we sometimes forget that she before she got into the family business, she was helping people become presidents and running for mayor and all that stuff. So she's very smart. She's probably the from I would say from a business perspective. All of the kids have a piece of Logan in them, but I would say Siobhan is maybe the closest to Logan from a business perspective. I don't think Ken has that killer shark in him. I don't think Roman has the full knowledge to really lead a company, but I feel Siobhan has that instinct in her. But we're seeing the reverse of that with this phone call here as we see Sandy Jr., who makes her first appearance this season, gets on the phone and wants to open up the conversations about Sandy and Stu coming in to buy Waystar. As we know, that was a big deal for, for the last few seasons, especially last season. And again, we're seeing Shiv acting more on emotions, especially you notice she this conversation happened immediately after she called Tom and called him a bitch boy and all that stuff and immediately has this conversation. So again, this is a, a decision. This is a move, in my opinion, purely stemming from emotion that she's upset with Tom, but also, you know what? Who's working with Tom right now? My dad. Let me try to screw them both over. Two-in-one type of situation. So again, yes, this is a somewhat smart business move. Yeah, we can maybe get more money out of this, but I don't think that's her first priority. Her first priority is how can I screw Tom? How can I screw my dad more so than how can I put more money in my pocket? I think that's where her head's at with this decision right here. He doesn't want anything to do with the decision of handling if Carrie's going to be on camera or not. He's going to leave that up to Greg. Again, take notes, ladies and gentlemen. Logan's he's a smart man. You don't want to, you know, piss where you eat uh, per se, right? So he's he's smart in having them handle that situation for he can keep Carrie on his side. And, and keep that in mind, not only I think his security guard, Colin, and I also think Carrie and also Jerry and, and Carl, they all have dirt on the Roy family, but more so Carrie. She's sleeping with Logan. And if Carrie isn't happy, and if Logan's the one that tells her you're terrible in front of camera, just keep working with me, you'd be my assistant or whatnot, she would probably do some things that wouldn't be good for Logan. So he's smart to just let the, the cousin and the son-in-law for now handle that situation. He's smart. Take notes, y'all. That's how you that's how you handle your, your messiness. But Logan seems to be, he seems to have some concerns with Lucas. And that's what I want to get at. He doesn't like to be second in command. He doesn't like the way Lucas is kind of handling. Oh, Lucas wants you to take the photos. Lucas, hand he's handpicking the new members of the board. I'm curious to see if that's going to come ahead. If, if we're going to see Logan maybe really let Manson Lucas know that he's not that happy with who's going to be in, in charge. And if he, if Logan's going to be the one that maybe messes up this deal, I'm very curious to see where that goes. But this private helicopter has been compromised by the one and only Logan. Again, I'm telling y'all, take tally at home. Logan wins tonight episode. From a mental standpoint, he's playing mental gym, gymnastics with his kids. He He's moving a lot of chess pieces. So, He's ruffling the kid's feather as this uh, as this is being taken away. But we're seeing Shiv. And again, I want you all to notice, whenever the siblings are lying to each other, it always compromises them. We know Shiv just talked to Sandy Jr. and wants to get back into the conversation with Stewie. But she doesn't tell her siblings. <sighs> Why do they keep compromising each other, right? As she kind of plays coy and like, oh, um, oh, surprise, surprise, uh, Stewie and and Sandy, they want to talk, guys. You guys want to maybe get this? And 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 so far, Rome, Ken, no, screw them. We don't want to get back in bed with them and and all that stuff. But again, man, we as an audience are just like I'm telling myself, Shiv. Just be truthful. Just let them know that you spoke to them. Let them know that this is kind of where your head's at versus kind of lying your way into the situation. Because, again, whatever is in the dark tends to come out in the light, y'all. So, again, these siblings can never get on the same page. But, again, I just wanted to point out how Logan is just continuously 10 steps ahead of his kids and is screwing around with them and taking their toys away <laughs> just like a parent, right? <laughs> the kids think that they got dad, uh, uh, control on dad, but he lets them know, I still got power over you guys, no matter what you think. You, you think you might have won, but you really haven't. Stu and Sandy Jr. magically pop up. We all know Shiv probably gave them the heads up where they're going to be headed. They're surprised. I'm referring to Rome and Ken. They're surprised that they're there. But, of course, 
we know Siobhan isn't, but we know they want to get back into bed with the Roy family. They want their proposition is, hey, your dad, he's not, he's not making the best decision. The number he's selling the company to with Lucas isn't a good number. We, we can offer you more. Let's get back into the conversations. Of course, Shiv's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But meanwhile, Ken and Rome are like, no, we're, we're good. We're literally 24 hours away from being billionaires and buying PGN and you know, potentially making other money moves, but again, Shiv's playing pretty, playing pretty stupid, and it's, it's, it's a deal on the table. And and I'm the question I want to ask for you all watching live, and of course watching on the replay. If you were in their position, do you take the deal that's less than 24 hours away, or do you consider this deal? And again, we know what's going to happen a little bit later in the episode. Just putting what we know from the happens a little bit later aside, but just in that moment, which way would you be leaning? I'm the type of person that I'm I'm probably taking that first deal with Lucas and also taking into consideration uh last time we saw Sandy and and uh more particularly Stewie I don't trust Stu at all. I don't trust him with anything. So I don't know if I would want to get into business with him at all. So let me know in the comments, what way would you all go? Would you, like my man G in the comments now, taking the security bag, uh, Zia saying guarantee money, that's where I'm going. I'm not making any deals with Stewie, but let me know in the live chat and let me know, uh, those watching the replay, which which side of the table would you be laying on? But we find out what happens. Why Willow was acting so strange is because when she was making her, again, they were at the rehearsals, when she was making her speech, she told everyone, or at least everyone at the rehearsal dinner, that she doesn't want to do this. She doesn't want to marry Connor. And clearly we see Connor's upset. And, and again, we'll talk about it later as far as if you feel bad for him. We see Shiv. She's kind of persistent in this moment about leaving. But Rome and Ken want to help out their big brother. And again, this is another example of them lying because, again, Shiv, just be honest. Like, hey, I really want this deal to go through. I really want to consider this other deal. But again, she's just kind of, again, lying and just playing playing uh, the game that they normally do, which is, again, they love to lie to each other. But the Carrie situation, again, it goes back to does he actually genuinely care about Carrie or does he protecting his ass because he know Carrie has a lot of dirt on him? Or if he's really, again, how are you going to handle this, Tom? Is he testing the waters on his potential successor and, and seeing who can really go to bat for him. But he's having this moment with Tom. He talks about, and I love Tom again. He's smart, y'all. He's smart. I know everyone in the chat now is calling him a coward or whatnot, which he is, but he's 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 playing the game. He's playing the game of the Royce. I love how Tom managed to not say that Carrie was terrible, but at the same time saying that Carrie was terrible on the tape. <laughs> It was so funny to me as he handles this conversation and navigate. I love when the character and the way the show does so great of navigating the conversation, it comes off as the character in the moment is just spinning off the top of the head. Whatever comes to their mind is the first thing that comes out of their mouth. And then you can see the ball rolling in his head. And I love the way these actors play that. But again, the way Tom, who all season long or all series long is so afraid to talk and be truthful with Logan, the way he's able to manage this conversation about Carrie being bad, but not actually saying it, but then managing a way to say she's raw. She needs more time, maybe more time than more time and maybe never happening, but not actually saying that again, it's a smart way to handle this conversation as he tells Logan that, no, I don't think it's the right move to make. But again, I beg the question is, do we honestly think Logan want to carry in the situation because of what she knows, who she is, the position of power she's in, or do we see this more of a play towards this was Logan testing Tom with a pretty delicate situation? This is the girl I'm in bed with. This is a girl who, again, knows a lot of dirt about not only me, but everyone in the family. Was this a power move yet again by Logan? I'm testing you, Tom. How can you maneuver this situation? I'm more so on him testing Tom more than anything. I don't really think he cares if Carrie gets the job or not. But hey, that's just me. Let me know what you all think. We see in this moment here that he's he wants to just hang out with his family. He just wants his siblings to be there for him because as of right now, he thinks that the wedding's probably not going to happen, which I'm which if you see the trailer, the wedding is going to happen. But he at the moment, he just wants to be loved. 
even though he says a little bit later he doesn't care about love. But I, he says that these these Roys they they pretend they always pretend they're fine, nothing bothers them, but they they care. By the way, for those watching the replay, come and join us live when we have these after show because a lot of great conversations, a lot of good things that people bring up in the chat. But someone brought up uh, brought up in the chat as far as we had a conversation about Ken kind of being in the background. Why didn't Ken tell anyone that Lucas called him? As we're seeing the scene here. Lucas tries to, well, it doesn't try. He he does pretty much give Ken a warning, like, don't F with me, bro. And by the way, who told him about the meeting? Who's the one that told Lucas that the siblings were considering taking the deal? Who's the snitch? Who's, I mean, again, we know Lucas has a lot of money, so it's not, that probably doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure this out. And, and we know these people don't keep their mouth shut, but who is the one that is potentially leaking this information is what I want to know. And I'm very curious to see if there is a rat in the, in the, in the cage, but we see Lucas telling Ken that he knows that there's a deal in hand and he warns him, he's going to drop the bomb, drop the nukes on him. If he continues to do this and he's going to walk away. And we see my boy who we talked about has kind of been a secondary character. He, instead of for him fleeting, being fearful, being scared, what is what is uh our boy Ken do? Well, he texts Stu and he says, "Hey, Stu, send me over the deal. I'm considering it." And again, this is a move that shows us that every single one of the Roy family of the kids they have that shark in them. He he's not backing up from them threats. Maybe season one, maybe Ken, unstable Ken, drugged out, high on his ass. Ken would have been fearful of this threat by someone that's about to buy his company, but Ken says. You know what, bro? You know who my dad is? I learned a lot from him. I'm not going to take your shit. I'm going to go ahead and, and, and open up that conversation with Stewie, who, again, as I mentioned, I don't trust Stewie, but neither here nor there. He takes the bait, and he says, screw you, Lucas. I'm going to go ahead and um, get this deal maybe on the table. I don't know if that's a good move or a bad move. Let me know in the chat. But we normally are used to seeing Greg being the one that's getting the bad news. He's normally the one that's told to sit down, to shut up, this, that, and the third. To put a smile on my face, <laughs> to see Greg being the one to giving someone the bad news as he, and he does, does I guess the best way Greg can do it in the situation by telling... <laughs> Gary, that it was a focus team involved and that it kind of boiled down to her arms. <laughs> her arms weren't TV friendly. <laughs> Gosh, man. And, and the way he just kind of muffled and, and mumbled and stuttered and, and made his way to that, to that reveal was just very funny to me. Very, very funny. I couldn't forget that scene. Let me know what you all thought about Greg laying down the law. And then also Carrie, again, we talked about it a lot in this episode. She threatens Greg saying, if I find out that there was no focus team, I'm going to destroy you. I don't know if we're going to see that come to fruition, but I do think we need to keep an eye on Carrie this season for the remaining episodes. But I got a kick out of that scene. I loved it. It was so funny. Again, your, your arms weren't friendly. <laughs> rubbery arms whatever he said oh my gosh it was so funny but they're at the bar they're having a conversation after ken decides to get stewie back in the mix obviously siobhan's happy about this news but again it's roman we talked about it last week he didn't want to get involved with the pierce family he wanted to do the hundreds deal but brother and sister convinced him to get on board he's rolling with the punches in tonight's episode Let's focus on the Pierce acquisition. Um, Shiv's like, well, let's talk to Stewie and Sandy. Um, let's do that. And even Ken at first was on the fence, but then he got his little motivation after the speech or conversation he had with Lucas, and now he's on board. But Rome was like, come on, guys. Can we just focus on one thing? <laughs> it's like one one week we're starting a company. The next minute we're we're trying to kill dad again. We're now got this company and now we're trying to back out of the deal. I don't blame Roman for not really being on the same page with his siblings. But again, it's the it's two weeks in a row. The decision Roman makes the in this episode, it's been built into this. Because again, if I was in his shoes, I'm probably not trusting Shiv and Rome or Ken in the situation. And I love that Roman called them out on their shit in this moment because he says because by the way, we get the, let me bring up the scene here. It again, these kids lying to each other. We see that daddy Logan, who seems to always know when to step on people's shoes at the wrong time. 
he texts his, uh, his son, Rome, who we find out texted him, I guess, during last week's episode, during some time, happy birthday. And I got a kick out of Ken and Siobhan reading the text messages, trying to, you know, get a, a get a read on it to review his text messages there. But again, I love the fact that Rome calls them out on their shit because they're like, oh, you're messing with that. Like, you're the two that it, all this these business moves have been sh- like strictly based on revenge right? It's them trying to get back at dad, trying to get a one up on their dad. So I love I'm telling you, man, Roman has really, he's growing up in front of our eyes, man. He, he's he's doing his things. So I'm loving all the stuff that we're getting with Roman this season, but I love that he calls them out. But we see yet again, Rome is convinced by Siobhan, by Ken, and even Connor. We know Connor doesn't really have much to say in it, but they're going to disrupt the deal. They're, they're on the same page for now that they're going to mess up this deal for now, which Speaking of Logan, he learns of the news of the kids messing up the deal. He loves chaos. He loves this. Last week, roast me. Carl, roast me. Do this to me. He this is this is what he thrives on. This is what he lives in. This is how he made his billions of dollars. You don't become Logan Roy by just turning over, being pissed, being mad you lost a deal. You thrive in it. You live in it. And you figure out how to win. I love this. I love this here, man. Let me know what you all think about Mr. Logan. He again, he stole this up he, as he normally does, but he really just steals this episode. With the, he, he tells the he says the line. He knows his kids got the juice again. He he he's paying attention to is what his kids doing. He loves this. He's like, oh, maybe these little brats learned the thing or two for me. Let me tell y'all something, man. I love this scene so goddamn much. I love how Logan is just playing these kids, man. He tells them, you know, he's not there to talk shop. He's there to say uh, a couple things, an apology, one of them. But before that was, you know, kids, I was upset that you all didn't attend my birthday. Pay attention to the mental gymnastics that he's playing with them, man. Pay attention to what he's doing in this scene. He leads with emotion (laughs) because what have we seen so far with these kids and particularly Roman, not so much, but definitely Ken and Siobhan. They are led right now with their emotions. Ken is thriving off of the fact that he's beaten his father in the Pierce deal and, you know, messing up this deal with uh, Lucas. Shiv is trying to get the best of Tom. With the divorce situation, pissed that he's you know messing with the lawyers, pissed that he's not as maybe as upset about this being at hand, the divorce that she wants him to be because she's not leading the charge, and also she wants to screw over her father because her father's helping Tom with the divorce. So those two are leading with emotions. So what does Daddy Logan know? He knows his kids. He knows, as 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 a, as bad as a father that he is, he's a smart businessman. And he knows his enemies, and his his enemies happen to be his kids at the moment, but he knows them better than anyone. He knows them better than they do. He knows they're emotional right now. So what does he say? He doesn't talk shop. He says, kids, I'm I'm upset, you know. I wanted you guys there. And he, and, and look, there's there's a little bit of truth in that because we saw last week that he was clearly bothered by his kids not being there. You know, the whole roast me, roast me. He wanted, you know, he wanted Rome to say something slick. He wanted Ken to say something silly or shiv. They weren't there. He he did miss them, but he's smart. He's smart. He's like, why weren't you guys there? What a move. What a move. Putting the putting the personal stuff before the business. I see you, Logan. Again, who was the MVP tonight? But he then goes a step further. All right, I'm gonna play the victim for a hot second, just a hot second, but then I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and be the bigger man. I'm going to do something that I don't normally do. He starts to apologize to them about the situation and what happened with obviously last year with the divorce, with their mom involved and getting, you know, getting her on her side, all this stuff. Love Shiv. She wasn't budging. She wasn't moving. Love Ken. As he mentions, dad, it's a hundred million dollars more on the table. But I want you all to notice who was the one kid in the room that wasn't taking the bait in regards to the emotional bait, thriving off of the personal stuff, right? The family drama. They're living in the tea. They're sipping the tea like I'm sipping my water. 
Rome is the only one in this room right now. His siblings thriving in this, but Rome is the only one that's like, and also Connor's like, hear him out, guys. And again, Connor is just, he, he just is always up and down, left and right, wherever, wherever he sees money, he's going to go that way. But Rome is the one that's like, you know, dad, you're saying you're sorry. What, what exactly are you sorry about? This is exactly that you're, you're upset about. And again, who is the more aggressive person in the situation? It's Siobhan, it's Kendall. Meanwhile, Logan, cool, calm, collective, tells as they're laying in on him, call him this, that, and the other. He's just like, listen, I'm sorry for what happened. But after you poke a bear enough times, bear bites back. Tells his kids, listen, kids. And also, too, before we get into this, I still want you all to pay attention to Carrie in the room. She doesn't leave. She's kind of leaving the conversation because we know this is pillow talk. This is the conversation she has with Logan in the bed. You know what I'm saying? She knows all this stuff. You know, so I do want to, again, show you. Don't want to leave out that Carrie is, she's she's someone we should keep an eye out for. But then after you poke a bear enough times, kids, I love you. But you're not serious people. And walks out. Again, the master of manipulation Mic drop moment. This scene was so fantastic. Just the fact, location, they're at a random ass club in the back of a karaoke bar or whatever. Logan steps in there, shifts the whole tune, shifts the whole mood of the situation, plays them like a fiddle, and goes back to the emotion. What do Shiv, Kendall, Rome, Connor, all of them, what do they want to do? They want to prove their father wrong. And when your father tells you, I love you, but you're not serious. You're not on my level. You'll never be on my level. You never have been on my level. All these little checker moves you think you're making, not even close to what I'm doing. I love this scene. I love this show. I love the writing. I love the acting. I'm going to miss the hell out of this show because it's ending, obviously. But this scene to me is just the, the 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 fundamental nature of the show is we're just you know you take away the glitz the glamour, the quick witted jokes the millions of billions of dollars the plot the political aspect of the show you strip all that down at the end of the day this is a show about kids wanting to improve wanting to impress their dad. That's the human story. That's the that's what keeps me watching the show. The human story that keeps me invested in the show. And this was such a great moment. Seeing, I love you guys, but you're not serious people. Oh my gosh, that that cut. You saw how that cut. That left them <laughs> heartbroken. He said that. I, I can go on and on and on about this scene, but I don't want to bore you guys to death. I, I I don't know. I just love it so much. I love it so much. But I gotta admit. And maybe it's the acting. It, it, it is the acting for that makes me have a little bit of sympathy for Connor when he tells his siblings, um, "You know, I don't need love. I was born without it." You know, a little little Bane moment. Oh, oh, you think darkness is your ally? You just merely adopted the darkness. I was born in it, molded by it. You don't get me started. Uh, shout out to Dark Knight Rises. But, um, you know, he tells them I was born without love. You know, you kids uh, have always done things without me. Dad never cares about me. Uh, we got to remember, you know, just putting his, uh, his, 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 him being a moron aside for a second. In reality, in his wor weird world, this is the night of his rehearsal. This is the day before his wedding. This is supposed to be the best day of his life. But instead, Brothers and sisters are running late for his rehearsal, hours late, you know, because dad held up their chopper, because dad isn't talking to them, because dad is uh, trying to sell the company, but the siblings are trying to disrupt the company. Just putting ourselves in Connor's shoes for a hot second, I would be pretty pissed right now because, again, he's always forgotten about me. I did feel bad for him when he, when he said that. I, when he said he doesn't feel love, he hasn't been loved, and he's just used to it. He doesn't know if Will is coming back or not, but if he doesn't, you know, it's just just, just another another regular day for Connor being disappointed by someone that he thinks he loves in his weird way. But let me know how you felt about that. I feel bad. For surprise, surprise, surprise. As we wrap up the episode, guess who dad convinced to join? And it happens to be the most vulnerable of them all. That's Roman. And what I mean by vulnerable, he's the one that seems to really, how do I put this? 
the approval of their father. Obviously, Shiv wants the approval. Ken, Con, they all want their approval. We talked about the the emotional resonance with this show. <clears throat> but he seems to be the one that thrives off of having his father's approval because he is somewhat of a screw up, right? He was kind of late behind the ball. Ken was always kind of in business. Shiv was doing the politics. Connor's doing whatever. But he was always kind of late to the party in regards to being a, the the adult in the room. That's because he hasn't let go of dad's hand. He still wants to be led by his father and not want to be that leader. We saw that. I want to backtrack on my comment there. We saw him trying to be a leader in episode one of this season with trying to start the company. And we've seen him do other leadership things in previous seasons, but in particularly focusing on this season, we saw him want to start the business with his brothers and sisters with 100. That was debunked. We saw him. Let's focus on the Pierce acquisition. That was debunked because the kids are now, again, Shiv and Ken are just so driven by emotions. Let's do this deal. Let's, let's disrupt this deal. They pushed him out. I don't want to make excuses for Rome. He's a grown-ass man. But they they pushed him back to his father by not listening to him, by not taking in his suggestions of starting something on their own. He tried to do it. But he was met with pushback, and they push him so far back, he ends up in his father's lap. <sighs> Goodness gracious. Again, Logan, he's testing people throughout this episode. He's testing Tom, handling the carry situation. He's testing Shiv and Ken with this whole deal at hand, what's at hand. A lot of money's on the table. And he's testing Roman. And by testing Roman, he tells him, again, it's the way he uses his words. It's the way he knows his kids better than they know themselves. He tells Roman what he needs to hear. He tells him, meeting with Lucas tomorrow morning, I want you to attend. Dad, I don't think I need, I don't think I need to be here. You don't really need me. He tells him, I need a fire breather. And I want you to help me running and getting, he has a speech early in this episode about being the pirates and, you know, on, on the and, and leading the, the group together. He tells them, I want you to run ATM. And he tells him, Roman, I need you. We know these kids are emotionally unstable. And words like I need you is just what is just enough currency that they need to hear. And I think he's he's got them. He's got him. Split up the kids. I got you, Roman. <sighs> he tells Roman, I need you to join me, son. I need you. I need. That's just the words Roman's been wanting to hear probably since he was a little kid. Being thrown in a cage as a, as a, as a dog, you know, as, as Ken did to him, you know, doing all the stuff, being called the screw up, being called the, the less intelligent sibling of the, of the four. I need you, Rome. And, and and again, I brought it up a couple times in this episode. How many times have we seen Logan smile in this episode? I don't know. I've lost count. I don't know. Have we seen Logan smile so much in an episode? <sighs> what an episode. Let me know in the chat. Does Roman join forces back with his father? What do you think about Carrie and her situation at hand? What do you think about Greg? Will he go on a high trip now that he has a little bit of power and he actually put someone down or shot someone down for the first time? Tom, what do we think about Tom this episode and, and the moves he makes uh, with the, the whole divorce at hand and the way he was able to maneuver around the given the news about Carrie not being ready to be an anchor? Shiv, Ken, where are they at mentally? Talk to me in the comments. Sandy, Junior, Stewie, the deal, Lucas, is it in jeopardy? Let me know in the comments, y'all. We're going to continue to have this conversation in live chat. So for those watching this breakdown, come and join us every Sunday, uh, roughly 15, maybe sometimes 20 minutes after the episode premieres. Join the live stream. Join the live discussion with our after show. Before you all leave the breakdown, if you enjoyed it, thumbs up, share, comment, subscribe to the channel. We love Succession. I love you all. Come and join the community. We'll catch you all in the next breakdown.